always, 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 I cannot stress this enough, always try and mess around with saturation and shadow before you mess around with brightness. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Mathilde and welcome back to the Pixel channel. If you've been subscribed for a while, you may have seen this series where I break down how you can start a YouTube channel in 2024. The first episode, I broke down all the research you need to do, how to start a brand, how to create a niche. Second episode, I focused on creating a thumbnail. And in today's episode, I'm going to be teaching you how you can edit your YouTube video even if you have zero experience. As always, this video is timestamped below, so if there's a specific thing you want to know, you can skip through it and you can always leave us a comment down below or DM us on Instagram at Pixar. So first things first, before you even think about editing a video, I will mention this again, it's so important to do research. I've literally said this in every single video. <laughs> Almost every style of video has its own type of conventions that viewers grow to expect. For example, if you're filming a more informational video like this one, you're going to be using a lot of more pop-ups, b-roll and things like that to make your videos a little bit more visually interesting for your audience. As opposed to if you're vlogging, for example, the editing can be a little bit more simple and a little bit more plain because you're constantly changing locations and doing different things. So you don't have to make it as like visually striking and different every five seconds. So what you're going to do is that you're going to head over to youtube.com and you're going to type up whatever the title of your video is. You're going to watch a few videos and you're going to start noting down the trends that you see arising when it comes to editing these styles of videos. For example, do they all use the same music? Do they all use the same font? This is going to help you a lot because like I said, when viewers are searching for a type of video, they grow to expect a lot of conventions that if your video doesn't have it, it automatically loses some sort of like quality element to viewers. And this doesn't mean that if every single person who did a how to bake a cake tutorial used the exact same song. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. doesn't mean you have to use it, but it just makes you more aware of what your audience expects from your videos. So if you're ready, let's get into the actual editing tips. Today I'm going to be using Pixar to edit my videos because I think it's super easy and it's on my phone and it's good on the go. Guys, come on. First things first is creating the bare bones of your timeline. This basically means putting all the clips that you have for your video in a continuous timeline, just the bare clips. You're then going to make sure to cut out all the pauses, all the times you said, um, like once you have that, we can move on to tip number two, which is adding elements. Now elements kind of incorporate a lot of things. So let me break it down. You can include B-roll in your video. I love B-roll personally as a viewer, but also as a content creator, I use it all the time. If you don't know what B-roll is, let me set an example for you. Say I'm vlogging right now and I've been talking for a good five minutes and it's been this exact frame. And then I say, I'm actually really tired and I don't think that I'm gonna go out today because yesterday I went to the shops. If I do it like that, just like how you scene, it's still watchable as a viewer, you're still like somewhat engaged, but notice what happens when I do it like this. I'm actually really tired and I don't think that I'm gonna go out today because yesterday I went to the shops. It's much more visually interesting and the way that you have to edit YouTube videos nowadays because people have such short attention spans is to make sure that every couple of minutes, seconds, depending on how long your video is, you're creating some sort of visual interest that will kind of break what has been established in the previous scene. Now that element that I really would recommend is using text. Back to my shopping example, you could edit it like this. I'm actually really tired and I don't think that I'm gonna go out today because yesterday I went to the shops. This is really important in, for example, videos like this where I'm talking for like 10 minutes and every so often I say a point that's really important and I wanna hone it into my audience. So I'm gonna be using text like this. This way as a viewer, that's gonna stand out to you as opposed to all the other stuff that I said before, but also it's gonna stick with you. Number three is a little bit more advanced, but it's using dynamic video cuts. If you're a regular watcher of YouTube, you would recognize a lot of these cuts, even if you've never done them before, even if you've never been to film school, even if you've never heard the names of them, they're very identifiable. For example, one that's super popular here on YouTube and creates a lot of dynamic interest is the zoom in. Like you can make someone watch a five minute clip of someone talking and they're bored. The moment you add little zoom ins, it feels like a hundred times more interesting. Again, it's super helpful in tutorials because that means you can hone in specific sentences or phrases or words. That's better used if the camera is still in like a tripod or you just put it down. Bonus points, you can also use it to add comedic effect to your video. Another type of cut that you can use is called a J cut and an L cut. J cut and L cut are a little bit more complicated and it uses a little bit more skill. A J cut is basically when the 
audio of your video is gonna proceed a little bit before the video actually starts playing. So for example, this is a J cut. It's super simple. An L cut is basically the opposite. The video is gonna start playing before the audio. So for example, for example, if I do this, this is an L cut. Another one is montages. Again, if you're vlogging, this one is specifically useful for you, but creating the perfect montage, it's a piece of art in itself. Personally, the way that I would recommend doing it is putting your music down first and then cutting to the music. That's a really easy way to make your video look professionally edited is just making sure that every time there's a beat, you change a clip. Or if a beat hits, something happens in your clip. It's gonna make it so aesthetically pleasing for your audience because we automatically just expect there to be a cut when there's a beat in a song. Like that is just the human experience. And it's gonna look just like really messily edited if there's like a boom and then your video cuts and it's not really like synced, but it's not done intentionally. Tiny, 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 tiny montages or establishing shots are also super helpful for vloggers because it breaks the talking clips and the talking segments a little bit. For example, in my own videos, I always like to use a location title, day, date, time. It's a little bit more orientating to an audience. It's a little bit like aesthetically pleasing and it also just kind of breaks it up a little bit. Moving on to the next tip, we're gonna be talking about color grading. Now, color grading is a whole topic in of itself. So if you wanna see more about that, make sure you subscribe to the Pixar channel because we may have some videos about that coming soon. I don't know. Color grading is one of those things that can seem so complicated, but the really basics of it are super easy to do. Literally a toddler with an iPad could do it. That's not a good comparison because toddlers with iPads are scary. They, they can do anything. Gen Alpha is like technologically insane. I'm gonna be very honest with you guys. I went to film school for three years and even I use Pixar to color grade on my phone just because it's so much simpler than any like laptop software. So the first part of color grading is actually color correcting. Any video you've seen on YouTube will probably done some sort of color correcting. This is super simple. It's just things like changing exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, saturation. This is super easy to do. It works the exact same way as if you were to edit a picture. Personally, I just use it to make sure that my video isn't overly exposed. When I tell you that color correcting can make or break a video, it's actually insane. Sometimes you film in a really dark room. Sometimes you film in a really bright room and then you look at your footage and you're like, this is unusable. You literally cannot see me. Guess what can fix that? Color correcting. Basically just gonna break it down really quickly. Brightness is gonna change the overall brightness of the video, not specifically focusing on the dark tones or the light tones. It's just an overall brightness. Next up we have contrast. That's either gonna completely increase the darkness and the brightness of your colors, or it's gonna make your image look super flat and you can use it both ways. Next up is saturation. Saturation is just gonna increase the intensity of your colors. Hue is a super tricky one because just the littlest bit can make your footage literally look like this. For example, if you're filming a video and it has a lot of green undertones and you wanna kind of neutralize them a little bit or even make it a little bit warmer, you can just kind of play around with the hue and just make sure that it doesn't look absolutely insane, unless that's what you're going for. HSL is a little bit more complicated, but it basically means that you can pick any color in the screen. So for example, if there's a bright red color and and you can change the hue of it. So you can make it super orange in this case, or really pink. And you can change the saturation, again, individually of this color. So your whole video can be super dull and you can just have a really bright red. And you can also change the lightness. And this is super helpful because a lot of the times you just have a color that looks super dull in your videos, but everything else looks really like bright. So you can't really bring up the saturation in the whole thing, but you can use this trick. Shadows, again, super explanatory. It's either gonna increase the shadows in your video or it's gonna decrease them. Same for highlights. And these ones are the ones that I specifically recommend using. Always, 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 I cannot stress this enough. Always try and mess around with saturation and shadow before you mess around with brightness. If you increase the brightness of a whole video, it can look a lot more artificial than if you were just to increase the highlights of the video or decrease the shadows. Same works the other way around. Just try and play around with these first before you go into brightness and contrast because then it gets a little bit messy. And last but not least, this is the temperature. You can either make your video look a little bit warmer or you can make it look cooler. Personally, I'm a little warm gal and I like to make my videos look a little bit warmer. And also because I live in England and everything looks like this, so. Would you believe it if I told you it's literally 9 a.m. and this is how light it is outside and I've got my light on. Again, as I have mentioned before, if you're interested in color grading, make sure you subscribe to our channel because more videos are coming soon. 
And last, but definitely not least, the next thing when it comes to editing is making sure you've chosen the right music for your video. Now, not every single video needs music, but personally, I think it kind of helps break the awkward silence. And especially if you're talking, it makes it a little bit more stimulating and interesting for your audience as opposed to me literally sitting here and all you can hear is the silence in the background. See, not fun. Please, please. Please make sure that your music is copyright free before you upload it onto your YouTube video because that can get your whole video taken down, your whole channel taken down, and that's not really fun. And it's really not fun to replace a song after you've been copyright struck. Like it's so annoying, especially if you use it in the background of you talking, it literally drives you insane trying to do that. And if you're using Pixar, if you go over to the music section, it will come up with a bunch of different songs. You can select the genre, hip hop, pop, love, dance, sentimental, chill, cinematic. Ooh, music really helps set the tone of your video so if it's more upbeat video or even if it's a more upbeat segment within your video use a fun song and then all your audience automatically knows and kind of expects what's gonna come so having said all of that i hope that you are ready to edit your first youtube video if you're a beginner if you're just looking for tips to spice up your content or if you just were really excited to see me talk if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Comment down below your favorite editing tip. I want to know how you guys edit your videos. Like I said, again, if you have any more questions, any topics you'd like us to address, leave it down in the comments or DM us at Pixar on Instagram. And I think that's everything. And having said all of that, good luck on your YouTube journey and I'll see you next time. Bye.